Hello everybody, welcome to Guitar Building with Glee Bass. This is part two of a new awesome project that we are working on. In the last episode, we got to work on the body of the guitar, we got the shape with the help of this template. So now I would like to put the body aside and work a little bit more on the neck. We already got the truss rod installed in place or at least the cavity is done so today i would like to make the shape of the neck define it a little bit more because now it's just a piece of wood doesn't look anything like a guitar neck so we are going to do this using the fretboard that we have and a template for a headstock let's get to work and let's get going Now, my plan for the neck at this stage is almost exactly the same thing as we did in the last episode for the body. I would like to transfer the designs and the dimensions that I have from my fretboard and from the headstock that I carefully designed, taking many things into consideration. So transfer them to the neck and then cut it to the rough shape at first with my jigsaw and then do the precise shape with the router. So the first thing I would like to transfer the designs that I have on the body so that I have reference lines happening on my wood while I'm cutting with the jigsaw. I'll start with the headstock. I have a central line marked in here, so I'm going to carefully align it with the central line of my neck which I marked in advance. This center line that is here, again, the most important line that we are having here L. So make sure that we are within the wood, nice and center. And again, we're not getting precise dimensions at the moment, but they're going to be very close to reality. Now that the headstock is marked, let me take our fretboard and align it with the center line. Again, I'm not aiming for any precise dimensions at the moment. I just want to get a rough idea so that when I'm cutting the neck with the jigsaw, I can, you know, kind of get as close as I can. And then finalizing the shape is going to happen with the router. Now that we have this sorted out, let's get to the jigsaw. So, yet again, it would be extremely helpful to have something like a band saw, but I don't have that at my disposal, so a jigsaw is all I have. So, well, it will have to do. And so, just like that, we got our neck to the rough dimensions. Now, obviously, there is still quite a lot of material left here, but again, not so many. Now, the next thing that we, well, subsequently would like to do is to get it to the exact dimensions. Now, we are going to be gluing in the neck into the body 
at some point in the future. So the dimensions that we get are going to be very important, very crucial for making the neck pocket. Now, you might be wondering, how do we get the neck to the precise dimensions? Now, the first thing to make this happen that I would like to do is I would like to get the final placement of the fretboard. So it's not here, it's not like that, it's not like that. It should be precise. And to make this possible, we are going to use a very simple but a very powerful trick. You might remember it from a previous build. It involves drilling a few holes in the fretboard, through the fretboard and through the neck. So something like this. With the drill. So, for example, on the second fret here and on the diagonal position somewhere around here. So drilling a hole and then using a stick of some sort as a wedge and then you're, you're going to put it in and the fretboard is not going to move anywhere. Now, the, if this is not something familiar for you, I'm going to show it just once again. So, fixing the fretboard in place. First and foremost, we gotta make sure that our fretboard is lined up with the central line. So, this is the first thing that I done. And I achieved the stability with the help of these two clamps here. So, this one and this one. I took my time to adjust them to make sure that the central line is happening all throughout the fretboard and here as well. So you see it's all lined up. Now these two clamps are just for the stability purposes. Clamp it down to the workbench. Next I mark my two spots here. So this is first one on the second fret and here on the 19th fret. I choose these positions a bit offset from the center so that we don't get into our truss rod cavity. Then I took my sharp thingy, whatever you call it, and then I kind of pre-marked these two holes here. So there are not the holes yet, but it expanded the wood enough so that when we go in with our drill, it's nice and centered and we don't damage any of the fretboard and we go right in that spot. Now, let's just drill the holes. And here is an up close shot on the other one. So you see this hole, oops, wood chips. It makes sure that our drill goes right in there and maintaining a 90 degree angle. We are just going in. until our depth stop. So what we can do now is we can take our stick per se. It's too long, so let's just snap it in half. And this goes right in there. And if I take you a bit further away with me, it also goes in this hole here. So let me unclamp it and show you what it does. So here is our achievement. Even without any clamps whatsoever, our fretboard stays in place. It's all nice and centered on the center line. Of course, we have now pins kind of sticking out of the fretboard. So now we can just take a saw and cut them off. So one done, and another one here. And another one done. Now, even though it is so in place and all, we can actually, at our own will, take it off. And here are our pins just up in there. Again, if you want to put it in place again, we locate our pins. So one pin here, one pin here, and we put it in place. 
yep just as i said very simple yet very very powerful getting the neck to the precise shape now that is not as straightforward as it might seem so let me share with you my thinking process i wanted to do something that i do all the time take the router and run it along something that is perfectly our shape that we need so this is how we got the body shape if you recall and i want to do something similar here i wanted to take the headstock template the fretboard that is in place also you know glue this on with the masking tape super glue trick and just run the router along the whole thing and i'm actually still thinking to do it now there is one little problem about it and let me demonstrate this to you from the side the fretboard is radiused so when we are going to run our router the base is going to tilt slightly it is i don't know half a degree one degree angle but it is there and this is not something that i would really like to achieve here so if you recall at some point we will be using this part of the neck as a heel joint when gluing it to the body because well this is going to be a set neck as you might guess by now now if we have this kind of angle so not straight but towards this side this is going to create i don't know some unneeded space in a glue joint and we don't really want that so what i'm thinking to do now is to take the fretboard off and substitute it with something that is straight so this stick here it is straight it is flat on the top which means we are not going to get any angle whatsoever so instead of the fretboard here we are going to run the router along this line though for the headstock it's all good it's nice and flat so yeah and and again it's on the headstock it's not that important so even if it was a bit radius you know not a big of a deal but right here it is crucial that we have a straight 90 degree angle so everything is perpendicular and nice so let me set this up it's not as easy as just run the router along the fretboard but i think this is essential that we do it and you know if we want later we can just run run the router along these lines you know not getting into our you know heel joint area so it will take a bit more time but i think this is all good because we're not just making a guitar here we're making a perfect rock and metal machine so no compromise just doing the right thing even though it takes some time so i just spent an unnecessarily huge amount of time setting up this routing gig so this routing setup it took me i don't know 15 20 minutes and i was just making sure that it's all straight and 90 degree so this is actually just serving as a guide for the router to make it 90 degrees so it just it just it better work out so let's get to routing The neck routed quickly attached the headstock template on the headstock using masking tape super glue trick and now let's quickly route the headstock shape again i'll start with the shallow bit first and then we'll move up the sizes because we want to take as shallow pass as we can so that it's all nice and smooth and all that good stuff
So with that part of routing complete, we can now remove our template. Yep, masking tape super glue trick. So nothing left here. So we can put it aside for now, although it will be useful later on in the build. And now we can use this channel itself as our routing template. So this time I'm going to use a bit of a thicker routing bit. Okay, this is good enough. Let me connect the router and we will complete the routing for the snack. For, well, at least for this point in time. That, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our small routing section for this snack. So let's take a look at what we achieved. Now the thickness of the neck is now the same as the fretboard. Or actually, while looking at the fretboard, I found out that this part is not so straight at all. So actually, the neck itself is now a bit more straight than the fretboard. So I'm going to route the fretboard against the neck, I guess, or just use some tools. And the headstock shape is now here. I did put on the fretboard to, you know, to illustrate it a bit more, but yeah, I guess this makes it pretty, pretty close to the final shape. Of course, there is some cleanup. So for example, routing marks here. I left this intentionally so that I can, you know, make a nice smooth transition between the headstock and the neck. Of course, we would have to narrow down this portion of the neck. Right now it's more than 20 millimeters. We wanted about 15. So we would have to thin this down. And this is still a bit rough surface, so I would have to refinish it, clean it up. But yeah, our neck is taking shape. Now let's get on with more things. So this is what the neck looks like so far. We've got our headstock shape sorted out. We've got our neck thickness according to the fretboard sorted out. Though here, you might have noticed that the fretboard is just a bit long. So I did this. I cut this part and now I think we can use the fretboard and route the neck. Now here I'm actually not worried about the radius because as long as we are in this plane so the router might go along the radius of the fretboard but the result here will still be true so it will still be 90 degrees so that's what I will do here. Actually, there was a better way to approach it. So the way I did it with the fretboard is with this little miter box and this miter saw, or I think you can call it a fretting saw, which is a really, really nice tiny saw. Uh, it has a very fine teeth, so it's pretty cool. Though the fun part is that the fretboard is too wide to get in there. So what I ended up doing is I Put it along here, clamp it down, and use this part with the miter to cut it. And then I put it alongside it and cut it like that. So even with limited tools, you can get the desired result. Though it, it demands some kind of creative approach. It definitely takes more time, which is well not a good thing. But then in the end, you can reach the result you know which you wouldn't reach otherwise even with very simple tools 
so that's what I'm doing here right now. I'm just continuing this saw. I did start it with the miter box like that. Then I drew along the neck the vertical lines, you know, to monitor my progress to see if I'm going left or right. And this way I don't even have to use a router. So yeah, I'm you know I'm I'm a big fan of router because that is a very powerful and a very useful tool but that's still it's very intimidating for me so when i can use hand tools i much rather prefer using hand tools just like in this case so let me cut it and then then probably we will have to use the router and i will explain you in a moment why and that operation was successful and no routing no anything very smooth surface of course i would need to you know touch it up a little bit make sure it's straight with the help of the straight edge but other than that it's all good here now let's move on to the headstock and here we got to do some more routing so this is our headstock right now at the moment it is very thick and i would want it to be 15 millimeters for my meshing heads for my tuning machines and I will not reveal them just yet a bit later on in the process but yeah according to my measurements I need 15 millimeters of the headstock and this will be all across the board except for this section here where we would need to make kind of a transition so 15 here all the way and then we would pick up with a smooth curve to here where our nut will be and the truss rod axis will also be here so let me create a jig for making this happen and then i'll show you what it looks like it will probably take me some time to set it up but then just a few passes and we are done here is our routing jig does it look strange to you well it certainly does to me but as i mentioned before creativity if you don't have the right tool or the right jig you know just diy it you know come up with something that works so what's happening here is these two are kind of the rails and we have our neck below and if you're wondering why the template is here is here for everything to be in the same plane so the router it also has kind of a rail here so it would kind of go in there and then yeah then i would just set the right depth and then cut the headstock just the top part of it to make sure we only have 15 millimeters left so yeah it's kind of complicated but you know just simple at the same time just two rails the router goes along and then we get our needed depth or needed thickness of headstock so let's route it out So just like that we achieved the uniform 15 millimeter thickness on our headstock well except for this part so it's getting closer and closer to the final shape little by little you know I was standing here now for a few minutes and then I was thinking now do we have any reasons now at this point not to glue on the fretboard and i couldn't think of any because pretty much all that is going to happen to the neck from now on or from this point on 
is pretty much going to be shaping and well we want the fretboard to be in its final place final position of course we are kind of mocking up the final position with the little pins i don't have them here right now but you know what i mean so yeah why why, why don't we glue on the fretboard so as far as gluing on the fretboard goes there is nothing really complicated but you just gotta prepare in advance you know all the things that you need prepare the fretboard itself the neck itself for the glue on and then just do it so a few bits of the preparation that i've done here is we first of all we've got our pins installed and i renewed them because i was you know moving them back and forth so these are just the new ones well this is our fretboard obviously i did some masking tape work over here so what you're seeing here is the top of the truss rod covered and if you recall there is kind of a hole in here so here the truss rod is all covered in the blue i don't know vacuum tape but here there was a hole and i don't really want glue in here because you know it will probably prevent adjustment or it may not but you know just to be on the safe side i must off the top of the truss rod some people do mask off the whole one and in the previous build i did mask off the whole truss rod this time i want to try to just mask off the top and here you will see in a moment if i put the fretboard on i must off one more bit okay so uh okay that is in so i must off the place where our nut will go uh in previously i didn't mask it off and there was glue all over the place i had to go in and clean it up with the chisel this time i just have masking tape and then i'll pull it off and we'll have our clean place for the nut and you know hopefully this will work obviously i have some other things but you know without further ado let's just do it and you will see the things that i will be using just as i use them Now that this is all nice and tight and all good, we can address the next thing here. So you see, we have some glue ripping out on the side. And this is expected because we, because we had quite a lot of glue there. So we're going to take our wet tissue and it can be a wet rag or something of that sort and just remove that glue while we can. At the moment, it is not very stable, so we can easily remove it. I'll probably end up using a few tissues for that, but as you see, 
if it's dry and cleaned up, it can be removed. And this is how it's looking like so far. So now that we are removed, we can, yeah, we can just clean it up a bit more and then I'll get back to you. This is probably a good point to conclude this part because so many things were happening, but as a result, we have our neck kind of sorted out. We have the fretboard and tomorrow I'll be able to clamp it off and we'll continue working on this build. So thank you for being here. If you enjoyed, that's awesome. Again, this project is really cool. I'm having the time of my life when I'm building guitars. And yeah, I'm just having a blast here, totally enjoying the process. So see you next time.